Hello students. In this video, we're going to apply Euler's formula for complex exponentials um, to a solution for a second order linear constant coefficient homogeneous ODE. Okay, so for second order ODE. So this is gonna be totally in the context of ordinary differential equations. So here's um, Euler's formula. <clears throat> it says that E that's the complex, um, sorry, that's the exponential function, e, and uh, if you raise it to the i theta power, where i is equal to the square root of minus 1, <clears throat> then you um, get the cosine of theta plus i sine theta. Um, okay, so I'm not going to uh, verify that formula or derive it. Um, I will do that in a different video, but um, I just want to show you the consequences of this formula and how it applies to differential equations. So right now we're just going to take this as an article of faith. All right, so why do we care? All right, so here comes the application. So suppose that you have a second order ODE with constant coefficients. It's linear, right? The derivatives of y appear linearly. Um, the coefficients are b and c. They can be constants. Um, and uh, it's homogeneous. That means <clears throat> we have a zero on the right-hand side. We write the characteristic equation down, so each order gets a power, so that's r squared, that's r to the first, and then r to the zero, which is one. And then I just apply the quadratic formula to this quadratic equation here, and um, I get r is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, a is one in this case, um, and then all divided by 2a, again, a is one in this case. <coughs> So um, in the case that the expression on the radical b squared minus 4c is less than zero, <clears throat> you're going to get a complex number. All right, so let me take you through an example. That's the case we're talking about in this video. So um, here's our ODE, y double prime minus 6y prime plus 13y equals zero. And um, I just go through the process of um, solving the characteristic equation and I get this 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of minus 1. Okay, because, um, you know, the square root of 16 is 4. <clears throat> I factor the 4 out. I leave the minus 1 under the radical, and I get the square root of minus 1. But the square root of minus 1 is i, so the roots of this characteristic equation are um, 3 plus or minus 2i. And now, just a note here, the complex solutions to a quadratic equation will always appear in these conjugate pairs. It'll always be something like a plus, you know, bi, a minus bi. You'll always see them pair up like this. So if you have three plus two i, for example, you, there's supposed to be a three minus two i sitting there as well. So we call those conjugate pairs. All right, now if I just put this into the formula for the solution to an ODE. Remember, that's C1 e to the root times t plus C2 e to the root times t. And my two roots are 3 minus 2i and 3 plus 2i. Then just using the laws of <coughs> exponents, um, remember that if I have a product of um, powers with the same base, that means I'm adding their exponents. And so that's what I just broke this up into I distributed the t, and I broke this up into e to the 3t, and then e to the minus 2it. Likewise, I did the same thing here. I distributed the t, and then I um, uh, broke it up. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to um, factor out that e to the 3t, because it's a common factor here. And uh, when I do that, I get this solution here. Now, this is a perfectly fine solution um, in many circumstances. Uh, mathematically, it's correct, and it, it's perfectly fine. We just call this the complex form. However, a lot of times in applications, we want to write this in terms of sines and cosines so we can you know, see explicitly the oscillatory behavior okay, or the harmonic behavior, uh, especially when we're solving problems with mechanical vibrations. So very often, engineers and physicists want to see the sines and cosines. They don't want to see the complex exponentials. Um, as you get more experience, <clears throat> you might 
come to like this form more, but um, for now we're just going to convert this to sines and cosines. So here we go. I'm going to use this is where I'm going to use Euler's formula here to um, write this solution in terms of sines and cosines. Here we go. So um, what is the real form of the solution? You might hear you might hear the question that way. They want you to express it in terms of its real um, output. Uh, we're real numbers as opposed to imaginary numbers. So in other words, they're asking you to output the solution in terms of sines and cosines. Okay, I'm going to take this first uh, term here, e to the minus 2it, and I'm going to use Euler's formula. The theta in this case is the minus 2t. So I get a cosine of minus 2t plus an i sine of minus 2t. And the cosine is an even function, so we're going to get, um, so if you put a negative sign inside of a inside the argument for a cosine, you just um, get the cosine back again. And if you put a negative argument inside of a sine, um, that's minus the sine. Uh, let me show you um, these just, just very quickly uh, so you can see what's uh, going on here. Um, ah, here we go. Okay, so if I plot the sine function, you notice that <clears throat> if... I plugged in a positive one, I would get some number here about 0.84 or so. If I plugged in a negative one, I would get a negative 0.84. So the same number in terms of magnitude, one, but when I put a negative sign, I just get the negative of the same output. In other words, okay, so you can see the, the anti-symmetry here in the sign, right? This hump is above the axis, this hump is below the axes. So, um, so this is what's happening here. So if I just output sine of one, I get 0.84, but if I put sine of minus one, I get negative 0.84. So that's what this is telling us. If you put a negative sign into the argument, if you put it, yeah, if you put a negative S-I-G-N inside of the argument, then that's the negative of the sine of one, okay? Now, likewise, um, the cosine function is an even function, so that means it's symmetric about the y-axis. And if I plug in a 1 here, um, it's the same value as if I plugged in negative 1. So the cosine is indifferent to the um, SIGN sign of the input. doesn't matter if I plug in uh, 1 or minus 1. I still get you know 0.54 in this case. All right, so that's... Um, what's happening here. And so now that's e to the minus 2it. Well, there's another exponential, e to the 2it. So let's output that. So I get e to the 2it. All right, that's fine. Now, I need a combination of these two. I need to put these c1s and c2s in here. So I'm just going to put those in. There we go. So I just multiply c1 times e to the minus 2t here. That's what I had down here. And c2 times e to the 2it. That's what I have over here and then I distribute them across uh, their um, uh, expansion in terms uh, from Euler's formula. And now I'm just going to add these <clears throat> together. So when I add them together, right, I get this left-hand side is exactly what I have in the parentheses down here. Notice that. And when I add this, just focus on this term, C1 cosine 2t, C2 cosine 2t. When I add these two together, look, I have the same cosine term here, right? So I'm going to factor that cosine out, and I just get c1 plus c2. Similarly, notice that um, I have the same sine terms here, but I have a minus ic1 and a plus ic2. So I'm going to factor out the sine. Here we go. And here's my minus ic1 plus ic2. All right. So now we're making some progress here. we got sines and cosines. I'm going to redefine these arbitrary constants. So C1 arbitrary plus C2, which is arbitrary, is still going to give me an arbitrary constant, so I'm just going to call that C1. You'll see sometimes people will redefine these with a C1 tilde, or they'll call the C2, a C3, or something else. I'm, I just, you know, I'm going to call this C1. And um, same thing here. I is just square root of minus 1. That is still a number. I understand it seems a little spooky. It's a complex number, but um, it's still a number. So I'm just going to redefine this to be another arbitrary number, um, C2. And uh, so then I'm just going to summarize my result here. So I have now that I have 
C1 e to the minus 2 it plus C1 uh, plus C2 e to the um, minus uh, e to the 2 it. Uh, sorry, I screwed that up here, so I should fix that. That should be a 2. Okay. Then um, um, this, uh, this left hand side is equal to what I have on the right hand side here. But if you look down at my solution here in a complex form, <clears throat> what I have in the parentheses is the same what I have in the parentheses here. So these, these two solutions are the same solution. They're just expressed differently. They look different. That's all. And so this is, these are both valid solutions, except this is the complex form and this is the real form of the solution. Okay. That's why we use, um, that's how we use Euler's formula for complex exponentials to rewrite the um, solution to a differential equation. Okay, look for some more examples. Good luck.